from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here with you on a Wednesday. We have a good show on tap. Uh, we are streaming live on Facebook at newschannel5.com, and we also will be... Uh, of course, here on the Plus, taking your phone calls. If you want to join us throughout the show, we'll get the number up in a moment, 737-7587. As we're talking about mental health issues, and it's interesting that the topic of conversation comes up today on this, the one-year anniversary of when those devastating tornadoes ripped through Middle Tennessee back on uh, March 3rd of 2020. And uh, all, all day long today, and frankly, for much of the week leading up until now, News Channel 5 has been uh, revisiting, looking at what happened then and where we stand today and one of the stories uh, that uh, you know I saw you know that we aired that struck me was how there are so many people right now who survived the tornado and were actually those caught into it and maybe lost some property or perhaps a loved one that are still now even a year later and probably for the rest of their lives suffering some degree of post-traumatic stress from just that devastating experience and how you deal with with that and then compounding it of course you know it was just a week after that tornado hit here in middle tennessee that COVID-19 became very much a reality for all of us here in the state and across the country and frankly the world. So it's been a stressful 2020 and as we make our way into 2021, we hope things get a bit better, but people dealing with issues and that's what we're going to talk about. Your mental health will open up the phone lines. We have two great guests joining us this morning to talk about mental health and let's introduce them to you right now. Uh, Tom Starling is with us. You can see him right there. He's uh, with Mental Health America, the uh, Mid-South CEO. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Hey, Nick. Good morning. Good to have you on. Also with you is Karen Carruthers. All right. She is uh, the, the Zero Suicide Initiative Director. And I understand we have her on audio, and we're going to put her picture up when we talk to her. But she's having some issues with her camera. But it's good to have you with us as well. Can you hear me okay, Karen? I can. Good morning. All right. Good morning to you both. Well, Tom, let's just start with you. You heard kind of how I opened it, and it is the one-year anniversary. And, uh, you know, you, along with Karen and everyone else, remember what happened. But I think a lot of people right now are still struggling. Heck, maybe some of them were making their way past it. And on this, the anniversary, a lot of this video is airing and reminding of them of what happened. Talk about a little bit of the trauma that you think Middle Tennesseans suffered in a disaster like that. You know, every disaster really sticks with you. I mean, it could be um, the bombing. It could even be a pandemic, uh, certainly a tornado. And what we do see is, you know, a lot of people when we have a, a flash flood warning like we did uh, on Sunday, uh, when there's storms that come, people really get a lot more tense. They can't sleep. Uh, they almost have some flashbacks. Uh, we've even talked to some youth, some children and youth who are a little nervous about even taking a bath. I mean, it's it's that type of, of thing to where uh, folks are just a little bit more on edge. And, uh, you know, I, it, people are doing a lot more uh, uh, yoga, mindfulness, mm -hmm. Uh, making sure that they're taking self time, you know, out, out self care for themselves. But it's a real thing, you know, people when they hear PTSD, uh, post traumatic stress disorder, they, they think of folks coming over from war, returning from war. But the truth is, it could be from abuse, storms, uh, pandemics, uh, destruction. So, uh, unfortunately, those have a lasting impact on us. And yeah, if you would, so how will how does that typically manifest itself in people? The post traumatic stress in reaction to you know events like what we had there, or even with COVID nineteen. And I guess a lot of it's obvious in terms of I guess feelings of anxiety. I know you can lose sleep. Um, you know who knows you may lose you know um, your appetite. All types of things. Uh, does it just depend on the individual, or is there a common ground there on how it sometimes manifests itself? You know, I, I, I wish that um, it was consistent across the board. A lot of times it manifests itself in, in different ways, a, a variety of symptoms. It could be anything from some um, sleeplessness or too much sleep. Um, it could be, you know, impact your appetite. Certainly your, uh, you know, blood pressure uh, might go up, panic attacks, um, anxiety. Uh, so it, it's really a variety of ways. And that's one reason that even on our website, we have actually put up a, a list of screenings that people can take 
uh, to kind of just take the guesswork out. I mean, it's not going to give you a diagnosis, but it's they're all evidence-based screenings for depression, trauma, anxiety, addictions, because we realize a lot of people are saying, well, um, you know, how can my being irritable uh, be depression or, or how could my anxiety be trauma? And so those screenings are a great first step when people want to just check them out at MHA, like Mental Health America. It's um, mhamidsouth.org. We'll remind folks of that throughout the program, including at the end. I think that's a great resource. And, you know, you talk about isolated incidents, and, but then you've got, you know, COVID that comes after that. And just this past week, there was a tornado warning going into the weekend. It just reoccurs. And I, I wonder, um, Karen, with regard to the worst case scenario and some, if there are times that individuals can eventually just feel helpless with it all, and that's where you worry about the potential for suicide and you know just if it gets to the point as tom was just describing some of those characteristics we suffer and if that continues i mean what should be some of the warning signs along those lines well actually some of the warning signs might be similar you may uh you know have a, a person that uh is feeling extremely sad um maybe more anxious than normal or agitated uh, you might, uh, as Tom mentioned, uh, they may have difficulty sleeping or eating, um, withdrawing from friends. I mean, a lot of different uh, things may manifest when a, when a person has um, begun to think about uh, suicide. So there are a lot of different things that you might see or you might want to be aware of. Yeah, I mean, it just can build up. I guess throughout all of this, and the one point I guess this whole program is going to be about, and then we're going to take some calls and some folks are following us on Facebook, is just the resources out there to help, all right? So we're kind of laying this out. We all feel this, all right? And it's amazing to me, despite the programs we do sometimes, Tom, on this and the public education, and you do a great job of it with your organization, how some people caught in this cycle, for whatever reason, aren't aware of the help that's actually there, or even their loved ones near them are not sure how to go about addressing it. And uh, that's why I say you can't talk about it enough. But there, there is always, I mean, there's no wiggle room here. There is always help and options, is there not? You know, the, there really is. I, I think that a lot of times when people are thinking about suicide, they can't see those options. But we all talk about being so close to the forest, you can't see the trees. And when you can't see any perspective, when you can't see any way out, when you think that, you know, taking your life may actually benefit those around you, um, you know, that's that's something that you got to kind of get get yourself out of. And there is help. There's uh, phone calls, texting, appointments, professional friends, clergy, um, you know, lifelines. And I would just always ask people to remind themselves of what brings them hope. That could be a pet, a friend, um, the, the future of reengaging, um, somebody's birthday, uh, you know, that, that deep moral sense that a child or that your, uh, your, your parents instilled in you, you know, when you were young, uh, you've really got to find a way to get past, past those immediate problems and I would also add, you know, stay away from things like drugs and alcohol that might uh, reduce your defense mechanisms, kind of lower uh, your defense mechanisms. Because uh, we do find that when people have unhealthy coping skills with stress, trauma, anxiety, uh, depression, they might start coping with alcohol and drugs, their defense mechanisms go down. And that kind of leaves the door open to uh, what we find in, is uh, somebody who dies by suicide. Sure. Hey, listen, before we do take our first break and then we'll get into the phone calls, uh, do give some folks so they have a better idea of what resources and what it is Mental Health uh, America does. Mm -hmm. And I know the focus oftentimes is on suicide, but give them a little bit of background about the organization here in Middle Tennessee. Yeah, we're sure. We're celebrating our 75th year. Uh, many people still know us as Mental Health Association, but we had changed our name to Mental Health America a few years back. Um, and just like there's a heart association, a cancer society, a kidney foundation, um, we're who you call when you need referrals, support, advocacy, um, programs, education, factual information. Um, so, you know, you wouldn't call the Heart Association and say, I need a cardiologist to open me up tomorrow. Um, I'm coming in. 
Uh, similarly, we don't provide counseling or respite. We are, we're Switzerland, you know, we're that neutral convener and we're great taking your calls and educating you and your family about mental health because truly there really is no health without mental health. Uh, couldn't agree with you more. Do you want to echo that at all, Karen, just about to how many people you see and the folks you guys work with and help? Um, I don't know that I would add much to that. Yeah. Um, I don't, we can <laughs> talk about later about some of the strategies that we uh, use and some of the, the trainings that are available that we can offer to people to actually help them and uh, to be prepared to uh, work with or support people who may have suicidal thoughts and the approach that they can take. Because a lot of times people are afraid to um, even ask the question or address the issue. So uh, that might be one uh, thing that we might want to talk about. Listen, we'll take a break on that note and we will talk about that more. We're going to take some phone calls, folks, on hold waiting to ask some questions. And if you have any questions or comments as you follow us right now on Facebook at Nick Barris NC5, give us a holler. We'll get you on there with these two who do some very good works helping folks here in Middle Tennessee. We'll be back with more right after this.